Do you want to protect your NAS from power outages? Do you want to know how to connect a UPS to your NAS? Well, stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to do this. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about why you should have a UPS on your Unraid NAS or any NAS for that matter. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbytesworthronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission but that won't affect the price you pay for the item if you want to get notified when new content is uploaded please click on subscribe and enable notifications now here's what we're going to be covering in this video and that's why you should have a ups on your nas in this case i'm going to be showing you how to do it with an unraid nas first thing we're going to talk about is how to correctly size the ups for your situation then we're going to talk about connecting the ups to a single nas and then as a bonus we're going to walk you through how to do this with multiple NASs and a single UPS, because you may not want to have multiple UPSs. When you're protecting a NAS with a UPS, and trust me, there are some advantages to doing this. In my own situation, I've had not one, but two power outages from my local power company. Thanks guys, really appreciate that. In the past month, anytime your UPS goes down unexpectedly when you're not doing a controlled shutdown, your parity drives are probably going to rebuild. You may have minor, uh, inconsistencies on one or more of the drives in your NAS. So this is why UPS is a good thing to have. Now, you can't just go out and buy a UPS and a one size fits all. You're gonna to have to find out what load you expect to place. Now, the best thing I can tell you to do is get something like this P3 kilowatt electric usage monitor. And there are other smart devices that you can also use, but this one will tell you down to the watt what it's using. And that's important because you want to have a UPS that's going to help you for a period of time. My goal on doing this is I want to have about I want to have about 15, 20 minutes runtime. I want it enough that I can probably stop what I'm doing, then do a controlled shutdown. Now, here's the kicker. I may not always be right at the NAS, so I want to have some way of automatically at least shutting the NAS down, even if I can't stop the process that's copying files. I at least want to minimize any damage to the UPS. This is where the P3 kilowatt monitor is going to help you find out not only how much power each particular NAS is pulling, but more importantly, or just as importantly, what it's pulling on surge when it first starts up. And those can be two different figures. What I found in my case is I'm pulling with either one of my NASs, once they're up and running, I'm pulling about 40, 50 watts, which considering both of them are about four drive systems is, is not bad. And one of the systems is actually powering down drives when it's not needed. But it was important to kind of get a pattern for what's going on. Once I understood that, then I picked up this particular UPS. And there are, there's uh, the, I believe Cyber Power. There's, there's several brands out there. APC is one I've dealt with over the years. And no UPS brand is going to have something that everybody's going to like. But this is one that was compact, reasonable price. I'm actually running two UPSs. I mean, sorry, I'm running two NASs off this right now. So it gives me about, with both NASs up and running, gives me about 20 minutes. So that's good enough time to get both of them in controlled shutdown. And what you want to do when you're powering multiple NASs is have your secondary NAS go down before your primary. And so they're not both trying to shut down at the same time. So that's just a good thing to have. Now, what I've configured mine for with Unraid is I've told it when UPS goes to shut down, that it's to power itself off as I don't want surges trying to bring things up and down. That's a nightmare that nobody wants to have to deal with, but it's very straightforward. And in my case, this is a 400 watt. You can see it right down here in the bottom. It's a 420 watt. And with the P3 kilowatt monitor, I found that I was pulling a little less than hundred watts with both UPSs up. So that's good. This said this would get me about 20 to 30 minutes runtime. The batteries are replaceable. You will have to replace the batteries at some point, probably around the three year mark, maybe a little sooner, maybe later. It just depends. And I only keep the UPS up and running when the NASs are up and I don't leave them up all the time, at least in the current usage system that I'm looking at. So there's a variety of UPSs to go with. Now this one ties in USB 2 and we'll go to the back of the page here. Now this is the port. It looks like an RG45. It's actually a serial port. It will connect to your NAS over a USB port. And right now I've got devices plugged in on both of these outlets. 
because their battery backed up. If I didn't care about them staying up when batteries went out or mains went out, then I could leave it on surge. But I want full protection because I don't want to have to pick up the pieces if a drive crashes because of an abrupt power outage. That's what I'm looking at. Now let's go ahead and start with getting the actual NAS configured and up and running. Now at this point, I'm in the Unraid console for my primary system that has the UPS directly connected to it. So we'll go over here to the settings tab and we'll click on UPS. By default, the daemon is turned off. Now before you get it turned on, let's check a few things. So we'll make sure that the UPS cable is set to USB and that the UPS type is USB. These settings in here, as far as the battery percentage to shut down versus runtime left because those are two different conditions they're not they're related but they're but they're not we can tell it how many time how time on battery before it shuts down because the you the nasas don't shut down instantly so you got to give them some time this is a setting here that you may want to adjust that we may want on battery for we'll say two minutes before it starts shutting down and at this point if the ups does go into shutdown at this point we're telling it to turn off that way it keeps you from having to worry about things coming back up and not being ready because i would rather leave it powered down if i can't be directly there when things come back up at this point i've already got the cable attached so i'm going from the usb slash serial port on the back of the apc ups and then i'm just picked one of the serial ports in random so we'll click on yes. We'll click on apply. Give it just a bit here and you see it comes up. Batteries at 100%. That tells you my approximate runtime. And right now this is with both Unraid systems up and running. I've got 420 watts and I'm only using about 88. So I'm about a 20% load. I would not want to do this going into more than a 50% load because I want to have some runtime. I don't want to immediately have to go into a shutdown. Some of my power outages are like a minute or two or there is enough of a blink that everything starts powering down and back up. That that's, you know, I want to keep things up and running if it's only a very brief power outage. If it's going to go more than a couple of minutes, at least in the history of my power company, I just need to go ahead and go into shutdown because I know I'm going to be at least an hour or more. And I don't try to run an extended period of time. It's the capacity you would have to purchase is not worth it. And I toured an IBM data facility many years ago. They had a whole building that was a big UPS. All that did was buy them enough time to bring the generators up, which bought them enough time to do a controlled shutdown. So that, that's your best case scenario. I would not try to run on an extended period of time. Once you're up and running, this is another good indication that everything is talking because this gives you more of the details as to what's going on. If we go back here to the dashboard, then you'll see a new section pop up here, which shows online, and this gives you a thumbnail of the page we were just on. So at this point, you're up and ready to go. You're protected from surges or extended power outages. So you really can't be any easier than that. Now is when we're going to get into a little more advanced configuration. And this is when we're talking connecting a single UPS to multiple NASs. Now there's pluses and minuses to this. The plus is you have one UPS and that's all you have to worry about with getting some minor configuration on both your NAS systems, which in my case is going to be unright. Downside is if the UPS goes out, both of your NASs are going to be affected. So you may, depending on your level of pain tolerance, you may want to have two UPSs and have each one separate. There's no right or wrong decision. It's a matter of what you are most comfortable comfortable with. And the UPS that I'm using is about a $120 UPS. So tomato, tomato as to how you want to proceed. Now, the instructions I'm showing you here are what I followed to a degree. While not directly pointed at Unraid, it got me close enough to where I got things up and running. And some of the configuration that was needed that this points out was already done. So that's even better. But the graphic here from the Pontificus .net, I hope I pronounced your name right, apologize if I didn't, gives you an idea of what to do. Basically, your both of your NASs are going to have to be plugged in electrically to the UPS for this to work. Now, from an Ethernet standpoint, you're going to have to have both of them pointing or connected into the same switch, and that switch needs to be in on the UPS. If not, then you're really kind of shooting yourself in the foot. This thing's not going to work the way it's expected. Now, these instructions walk you through a good step-by-step on what you're going to have to do and we'll i've already got this up and running but we're going to go through and kind of show you what to expect so each one you'll have the master system in the case your primary nas and then a secondary nas and you can have more than two nas is tied in i just have done it at three at this point because i i'm running at a comfortable level for only having one ups and i'm kind of want to watch this while before i start getting crazy and tying in more than one so there is a main configuration file and i would do this editing with the ups 
service disabled on Unrate or whatever NAS that you're doing. Now there's a main configuration file and you may find when you go through this that all of this is set up. Now the secret sauce in this is when you go down here to net server. Now for me that was turned on on both of the Unrate systems. Just leave it at 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0 not going to be a problem. And the easy way to get to some of these files is we'll go over here and let's find the right icon feedback. Oh no, here we go. There, the one that's the greater than underlying terminal. So you can get to a terminal and don't have to worry about a whole lot. So what we can go through here and do is we can edit the file involved. Now you always want to make a backup. And I would say whether you're working with Unraid or not, make a backup of your configuration before you get started just in case. You probably are not going to need it, but if something goes south on you, you're going to be pretty well covered. So we'll go over here and we will get into that. So you can see this is basically going to parallel very nicely with, with what we're dealing with. And it's just a matter of going through and match the settings. That's the easiest thing that I'm going to tell you, because this one's going to be the master. Now there's going to be a host system that we're going to get into. Now this is important from a standpoint of it's more of a security setting than anything else that you don't let somebody start injecting settings in and adding things. Now, see, this does not have anything in place. I have found this is not needed. But again, this is part of the experimentation you may find for the particular NAS system that you're on that you need this. Again, it doesn't hurt to put this in, but just as a precaution, you know, go through the steps and then you've got some troubleshooting to do. Then there is the other setting here where, you t where you're telling it that you are configured to do the UPS connections you're setting up. It's This is where I did run into one thing I had to deviate from. On Unraid, the system control command does not exist. So in this case, what you would do is just do, you'd go here to the dashboard and you would click on the little one that says reboot. And we don't want to reboot at this point. That would get it to reread the files. That's what you do on the main system. When we get into settings, okay, restored. Well, we're going to un undo things here in a bit. And we'll turn off the notifications. Now, this is on what would be your secondary or tertiary or whatever amount of NAS systems you're going to have set up. We've got a separate set of directions here for that. And we'll go down here again, walk through these, especially make backups of all the files just to be on the safe side but we're going to do some things differently and we're going to say ups cable is ether for ethernet ups type is network now this is make sure that you get the ip address of your system that your ups is actually connected to and the 3551 is an important port number got to have that right initially when i got this started to get this up running it wouldn't talk and then i realized i'd literally copied the ip address and i hadn't put mine on in sub so, note to self you know check that when you're when you're going through again it's very similar to what's going on that you've got to walk through a few other things. And this gives you a summary. At this point, we are going on the secondary system. We'll go into settings. We'll go to UPS and see, we've already got it turned on. So it's reading it just like it's attached, but it's actually running across the network. This is, this is the nice thing because normally to get an ethernet port on an APC UPS, the card itself is usually a couple of hundred dollars. And then it's only your higher end UPS that have it. So this is nice that you've got one for a little over hundred dollars that you can have both of them connected to. This is where the settings, you're going to dial this up a little bit. You want the second secondary system to be shutting down before your primary so that you have at least one system going down at a time and it makes things a little bit easier. We've also told this one to turn the UPS off. Now, there's a couple of settings here that we need to go look at. What we're going to see here, okay, let's go over to dashboard. Now, what you will notice here, uh, Q, oh, cube is the secondary. Okay, here we go. I had it wrong. I was looking on the wrong system. Story of my life. Day late, dollar short. Now, on your secondary system, you're going to notice a status difference. And it's going to say online slave. That's your indication you're not on the primary NAS or Unraid system, if that's what you're using. It is talking over the network. So it says network UPS driver. And it gives you, should give you, the same readings that you're going to see on your other one. See, on this screen, we're now talking online slave gives you the same information. And right now we're actually running at 30 minutes and that's with both UPSs and no, I'm sorry, with both NASs. They're basically in a, not a standby state, but I'm not actively running anything. So that's going to help a little bit. And so that really is all it takes. But going back to these instructions, you, the system control command is not there. So you're going to need to most likely restart it to get it to take. Now, you may be able to find just by going into the settings screen, UPS settings, you may have to do is just fill these in. And that may be it. 
I elected to go through the file settings just so that especially if I was running different types of NASes, and I am, that I had a consistent setup. This may be, you may be able to do it all through the GUI, but I, I elected to go through the configuration process. There are some commands it tells you about. You can go into the APC UPSD.events file. There's also APC access CLI command that gives you the same information you're seeing in the GUI. That really is all it takes to get it up and running. I said, I've got you two UPSs on there. So it gives you some protection. It's not going to be foolproof, but especially if you have power outages, power surges, that you're doing what you can to protect the not only the NASs, but the data on the drives. Now, something to keep in mind, and I'm sure by now somebody's probably already sent me some emails about this one. Whatever UPS you get, make sure it's got AVR on it. That's automatic voltage regulation. So the UPS will supplement if the voltage drops too low. Conversely, if the voltage is too high, it actually dials the voltage down. So you're not hitting your systems that are plugged into this with too much power because that over time can also do damage. But make sure whatever you get is has got AVR on it you'll you'll thank yourself later one more thing i want to make sure that is covered before we bring things to a close there you should get a cd and you can also download this directly from the apc website power shoot personal edition this is expecting the ups to be connected directly to the workstation you're running this on and unfortunately they only support windows i really wish they would come out with a mac version but they haven't so this is not going to help you in this case hopefully there may be another version that can but this one was as soon as i tried to install it said i'm sorry ups is not attached so i'm going to be looking for another version if i find something i'll put it in the notes for the video but at least you have a good console available on both of the NAS systems or however many NAS systems you're going to tie into the UPS. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. See you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.